It's Stacey Cole and Carol Hughes. We are talking about the worst of the worst because that's what we do on Murder in the Morning. And I I mentioned off air that I kind of wanted to spare you a little bit, Carol, because maybe you're not used to the worst of the worst, but that's what we do here. So suck it up, right? Well, and, you know, if you talk about balloons and unicorns and rainbows, I'm, I mean, that conversation's not too long. Right? <laughs> like, aren't, isn't that a beautiful rainbow? I don't know. Yeah. These kind of stories, though, I mean, they are the worst of the worst, but this is reality. This is this is somebody's life. Like in this case, somebody almost died. Yeah. Because somebody else didn't like him, basically. Basically. And what we're talking about is a California pastor is arrested for allegedly plotting the murder of his daughter's boyfriend. Pastor. And for- pastor. Pastor. Yeah, well, yeah. And a dad. So, you know, I, we've, we've all seen relationships where we're like, ew, I don't like your significant other and you need to get rid of them. But not like this. <laughs> and this is bad. I, I don't know how old the daughter is. I don't know how old the victim of this shooting is. They could be late teens. They could be early 20s because this guy's 47, right? Yeah, so, so he's kind of a young dad, I'm assuming. He could have a 20-year-old. He could have a 25-year-old. So I don't mm-hmm. know how old the daughter is. But my guess is anytime you're a parent and you get involved in your children's romantic relationships and you're like, we don't like him, all you're going to do is push your child into the arms of that person you don't like. 100%. And that's that's how I ended up with my father. <laughs> um <laughs> My dad would not have been part. Well, I I wouldn't even exist. I'd exist differently, I assume. Um, My dad, my mom's parents did not like my dad. And guess what that did? That drove my mom to marry him. (laughs) So, hello. (laughs) That's what happens. And so, and this makes, I don't know. I'm going to guess maybe he tried that approach. It didn't work. So, of course, there's only one other option. Try to kill him. Exactly. And here's how we dive into the story. A shocking revelation has rocked Riverside, California, as a local pastor stands accused of orchestrating a murder-for-hire plot against his daughter's boyfriend. Samuel Pasillas, age 47, from Victorville, was arrested last week on a slew of charges including solicitation for murder and attempted murder after reportedly paying $40,000 to have the boyfriend killed. Take him out. Be done with him. I mean... It makes no sense. I guess he thought he could spend, maybe that's his life savings. That's a lot of money. That could be life-changing amount of money. Mm -hmm. But he spends all this money to get rid of him. But now he's going to spend the rest of his life in jail. Well, he doesn't have to worry about his retirement then. I mean, that's taken care of for him, really. That's true. He doesn't need the $40,000 anymore. Did he cash out his IRA to get the? I don't know. I don't. I, the more I think about it, the, I'm like, wow, dude, where'd you get that money? But so here's how this went down: uh, a chilling incident where the boyfriend arrived at a local hospital with gunshot wounds. Recounting the ordeal, the victim claimed that he had been ambushed while driving, with a vehicle pulling up alongside him and opening fire. Detectives delved deeper into the case and they unraveled a disturbing truth: a sinister murder-for-hire scheme. This was mastermind by Pasillas. According to the city's press release, he had enlisted multiple individuals in this plot, providing them with detailed information about the victim's whereabouts and his activities, including the night of the shooting. Surveillance conducted on the boyfriend in the weeks preceding the attack further corroborated the Chilling's plans, Chilling Plan's existence. Now, despite his alleged involvement, police revealed to the media, stating that the victim fortunately survived the assault and has since been discharged from the hospital, although he is continuing to recover from his injuries. Shedding light on the possible motive for the heinous act, authorities hinted that Pasilla's religious ideology might have been a potential factor and that it may have spurred the pastor to seek harm against his daughter's partner. (laughs) So I could see a couple different scenarios here. Number one, I could see the boyfriend and this daughter totally breaking up because this I would imagine this the boyfriend would be scared to death of this family. 
But I could also see the daughter and him staying together and her never talking to him again. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're not going to get together for holidays. Uh, Hmm. If those two get married for, you know, overcoming this obstacle, dad's not coming to the wedding. He's in jail. Right. Um, Yeah. Like, how do you forgive for that? I don't think you do. And, And in the Bible, where does it say this is okay? Like, if you really are a pastor in your heart, you would... You would always be leading by example. Yep. You're a good person. You know, you're following your faith. You're living your faith. But well, this person is, the faith is on the outside. This is who I present to the world. On the inside, I'm arranging a murder for hire plot. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just absolutely horrific. And this poor daughter I feel really bad for her because I would feel a lot of guilt. My dad just attempted to kill my boyfriend. Yeah. But then this poor kid, like how traumatizing. He's going to have PTSD for a long time. He might not be a kid. I don't know. He could be into his 20s. But this poor guy, like how how do you trust the universe again? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, I feel so bad for him. It's just, it's. I don't know. I mean, we we hear about murder all the time. I mean, the show is called Murder in the Morning. But to me, a, somebody who masquerades as a pastor and yet could commit this. I mean, I think there's what like over 60 verses in the Bible about murder. Um, you shall not commit murder. Uh, I mean, that's that's repeated many times. It's I like, mean, let's just basically go to the Ten Commandments. <laughs> you know, right? Like, I mean, there's another example. It's just anybody who murders will be subject to judgment. I mean, these are basic things that if you proclaim to be following the Bible as as how you live your life, especially a pastor, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, you're not doing your job very well. And and I was reading this story, a local news um, outlet there in the area. They said that they went to the, and I'm using air quotes, church, which was a house that belonged to this other pastor, Raphael Porras. And he said this guy was not a pastor, but he volunteers there. So maybe he volunteers in a way where he give, gets up and takes part in the service but maybe, or maybe he's, he's not a pastor. Really a pastor. Maybe he's a pastor like I am because I'm a pastor as well. I signed up online. <laughs> so, I, I am too. Yeah. The Universalist so maybe that's, Church. Yes. Maybe that's how he's a pastor. It's not real. I mean, it's it's legally binding. You can do marriage ceremonies, but are, are you really living it? They don't really look into that. I just got it so I can marry some people. <laughs> There's my niece asked me to marry her. I'm like, okay. My nephew's like, can you marry us? Okay, I'll do it. Yeah. See, I, I've oh. had it for a number of years. I've never married anybody, but I just thought it'd be fun to have. And I've but, actually used my certificate from the Universalist Church. And that's probably this guy. Well, he's a prime example of what not to do. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers Podcast, dropping soon. Press subscribe now.